Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Houdini tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to set up a really quick RBD fracture solver and applying some materials to the outside and the inside separately using a real simple masking technique. So the first thing we're going to do, we've just got a fresh scene here, we're just going to set up a geo node, dive in there, and we're going to use a sphere for this, you can use whatever object you like. I'm just going to set this to be a polygon and I'm also going to subdivide it like so. Then we're going to transform this just so it's sitting above the ground a little bit and we'll create an RBD material fracture. Plug that geometry into the first input and we're not going to mess around with the settings there apart from adding chipping because it looks cool and constraints. Um, we're just going to lower the strength to be like one so it fractures really easily. Then we're going to create an RBD bullet solver to run the sim on and we'll, uh, we'll run all those inputs across into the first three inputs or zero through two inputs of the RBD bullet solver. So if we look at that we'll also need to create a ground plane and if we just run the sim you'll see that it breaks up like that. Very simple. Um, we're also going to add some internal detail to that. So now the inside's got this nice rough texture and the outside's relatively smooth, so that is fine. Um, so at the moment if we assign a material to it, it won't actually assign uh, a separate one to the inside and the outside. However, we do have these inside and outside groups. So what we can do is we can create a color, plug the geometry in there, and we'll call this group outside and we'll make it a vert group and a vert class. If you use a point class the accuracy of the color is not going to be as nice. Um, and we'll make the outside color white and then we'll just create another color node and this group is the inside. Just do verts and verts again and then we'll change this color to be black. So now the inside will be black and the outside is white. We're not actually going to use these colors, however, we're just going to use this as a masking function for our material. Now our material is going to be set up with Redshift. You can do this with anything if you're using RenderMan. You could use a material um, layer method the exact same way. Just reading this color data, you'll use a Pixar prim var rather than a user color data, which we're going to use here. So we're going to just set up a Redshift ROP and we're going to create a camera and then we'll just create a dome light. Okay, so now let's set up a material network and create an RS material builder and we'll drag that on there. Dive into the material and we just need to create a material blender. We'll plug the top material into the base material color and then that output from the material blender into the surface. Create another material, an RS material and that goes into layer one uh, color. So this color here is going to be the outside and this color here is going to be the inside. We will make the outside white and sort of a roughish specular and we'll make the inside color yellow and very specular. So now we just need to assign the mask which we'll do as I said with the RS color data run the output from that into the layer one blend color and we're just going to set this to CD because that white and black color on our are on our CD parameter. Uh, you'll see that I've got that backwards um, so that's just easy we can just do a color invert pop that in between there there you go the outside's white the inside's yellow. Now say we wanted to add a texture to the inside and this was animated. I'll show you an example of where I messed this up. You can see that the texture actually doesn't stick to the material because I hadn't UV'd it correctly. So I'm going to show you how to set that up properly right now. First we'll just add a material and we're going to use a or texture and we're just going to use a RS Max and Noise and we'll just use a layer color and we'll run that into layer one color and set the mode to multiply and then the base color can just be our yellow. I don't really like the yellow, I'm going to make it green. And we'll set the out color to the diffuse color and then we'll just make this a Luca for example. Render render. Okay so you see you've got this effect happening now. Looks pretty cool 
but at the moment if this was moving say this highlighted part here wouldn't move with it so what we need to do is we'll jump back up to our to our geo and we need to put a uv texture node in between our rbd fracture and bullet solver and then in our material we need to make sure that the max on noise is set to a uv vertex attribute so if we render again the texture has changed its position slightly because it now it's actually aligned correctly to the uv of our internal area if you want to uv the internals you know specifically for a texture you could do that obviously but i think nine times out of ten you're just going to be using this as a noise for example if you just create a bump you'd be using it for that sort of thing just to accentuate the internal areas and make them look a little bit more like a fractured material. So here's an example where you can see it completely finished with the material on the inside working as intended. It's fairly subtle on this one, but that internal bumpiness that you see is actually a bump map rather than actual geometric noise. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.